Hi, it's another beer. And it is a beer that was canned about 14 hours ago. Trillium's The Streets Triple IPA. Triple IPAs are what seems like breweries who make double IPAs that aren't super strong tend to call their IPAs that are 10% or higher. Trillium's never made a beer or a, an IPA that's this strong. They've made plenty of strong stouts. And they call it the streets because, as you can see, I think it has the neighborhood of Trillium on there. All of their IPAs that are 7.2% alcohol with the same basic bittering and grain bill are named after their local streets. Um, they all have different dry hopping hops that they use. And this is just a giant IPA that uses all of the hops in every street, Melcher, and A Street, and Congress Street, and Sleeper Street, and Stilling Street, and maybe I missed one other. So a lot of different hops, like six different ones. I can probably remember the hops better. There's El Dorado, Galaxy, Nelson, Mosaic, and the, oh, Simcoe from Summer Street, I forgot that one and maybe I'm forgetting the other one, I'll think of it later. Um, and this is their like fourth anniversary beer. This was also canned yesterday um, and released at, in Canton before and during their fourth anniversary party. This is the one that was canned today on Monday and I bought it at um, the Four Point Brewery in Boston. And I didn't actually have to wait in line at all. I went like at 1.30, one, one, right before 2 o'clock, I guess, and which is the best time to go probably because they sold out of this. I think this beer is completely gone unless you want to pay some dick $168 or something for one or trade. I'm sure lots of trading will happen. Yeah, 10% alcohol has the same grain bill as the single IPAs, all the street IPAs. But I guess it's just amped up to be 10% instead of 7.2. And it's darker, definitely, than most Trillium beers, probably just because it's so it's strong and the the that much more malt just added a little bit of color. It's not um, I don't know, quite as intensely murky as maybe some of their beers have had. I've had it been, I don't, they actually, and they don't say that they double dry hop this one. Usually all of their, all their double IPAs, they, dry, they double dry hop, and the double dry hopping makes it a little bit hazier, but they didn't say they did it with this one. I can actually sort of, you can actually sort of see through there. I mean, not on the camera, really, but I can see my finger a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and it's, the head's sticking around, okay. Very big aroma. I'm definitely, I definitely noticed the booze. It's it makes it a little different than the normal Trillium thing, because uh, most of their, most of their double IPAs are eight percent. And there's a lot, a lot of different fruits in there. It's hard to pinpoint one thing off the bat, except for pineapple juice. It smells more like actual sweet pineapple juice. And, and definitely peaches. Um, they didn't say if the, what the ratio was that they used of all these different hops, um, but the mosaic seems to be kind of strong in the nose, just like extra peachy and pineapple-y. Of course, that comes from citra also. Oh, I guess, no, they didn't use citra in this one then. Oh, huh. that's the kicker is that Citra is from their uh, Fort Point Pale Ale, not one of the street IPAs, so I don't think, I think that that's the one really popular tropical hop that is left out of this beer. When I'm trying to think about each of the hops, like Simcoe and El Dorado, there's, yeah, there's berry notes. It's kind of like if I think about one hop and what the flavors that I'm used to with that hop, I kind of notice it in the aroma. Um, and I don't think I'm just bullshitting myself, maybe slightly. I'm not getting a lot of woody and pine notes that I definitely get sometimes a little bit from uh, from like El Dorado and giant IPAs. But this one, they did not um, let sit in the can for very long. Uh, a couple of their recent double IPAs that were um, special ones, they 
canned earlier and then released later, maybe because they wanted it to mellow out in some way. They did that with their Never and Again, their Mango Double IPA that was had some serious burning problems. Um, they also did that with Headroom, which is their other uh, double IPA that only comes out once a year. That's uh, probably as highly rated and, and going to be as, as hyped up as, as this beer right now. And maybe a little bit of strawberry. I mean, it, there is an, a little bit of an effect I get of like mixing together all of the uh, Smirnoff like fruit flavored shots. It's got so many different fruits, but it's always has that boozy background in the aroma. But not in a horrible way. I definitely noticed some ethanol in there. But nothing like nail polish remover. Hmm. And it doesn't it's not overwhelming on the tongue. It's lightly sweet. Ooh, the aftertaste has lots of nice flavors though. It's like strawberry, hard candy a lot, and lime. I'm getting, I think I'm getting the El Dorado notes. Mel, it's melony. Yeah, I'm getting a lot more in the flavor. The aroma, for some reason, it was just the slight booze in there. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, I don't like that. Like in general, I'm a, I'm a lower alcohol double IPA person, um, but the flavor is really nice. It doesn't doesn't have that soft fluffiness of some of their other beers. It has that booze bite on the tongue, but so many different tropical fruits and all the different Jolly Rancher flavors are happening on my tongue after I sip that. Um, and then there's that, a lingering warmth, of course, but I think just, it, there's nothing wrong with this at all, um, but I'm just prevented from enjoying it, especially because just the 10% and all that sweet malt in some way prevents me from enjoying the hops a lot and having it just be pure, a pure fruity experience which is what I love about a lot of these IPAs. And there, but there's not, there's also not much dank quality that I notice, at least not at this point. Which I guess I like. That if it were really boozy and just really vegetal and garlicky and stuff like that, I I, it would be definitely not as enjoyable. Um, I like how fruity it is, especially in the, in, the, in the taste. I'm gonna guess that maybe they didn't double dry hop this one. Yeah, I think I like some of Trillium's other beers more than this, but it does offer a lot of intense flavor that all their other beers just simply don't. And the mouth feels nice. I think I'm just getting used to the the alcohol and the, and the booze burn, um, but it's not too bitter. The burn in the back of the throat is just a normal 10% alcohol beer burn it's nothing that's we've we've felt in other double, trillium double ipas i felt in some other new england ipas styles <clears throat> you see the style done by other breweries um but the fruitiness that lingers is really complex and now it's getting syrupy i definitely get that syrupy fruit cup thing you know like canned peaches or canned like pineapple tidbits with maraschino cherry oranges in there i'm not getting a lot of a Coconut vanilla uh, flavors that I might get sometimes. Oh yeah, this has amarillo in it. For, that's another one. That's that's one that I get a lot of orange out of usually. <clears throat> but mostly just candied fruits of all kinds in this in this beer, and then tropical fruits in syrup in a can. That's that's what I, what I get from the lot in the flavor, and I like that. <clears throat> um, but I. Just by the fact that I'm not enjoying it as, as much as some of their other beers, uh, I wouldn't give it as high of a rating, but it's it, it's pretty well done. And people who are into the big, strong IPAs that are really a, a bam on your tongue, um, 
they would like this beer, but it doesn't have an overwhelming menthol -y, dank, green um, quality in my whole mouth. It doesn't have a, a very much bitterness. Um, so it's cool, it's just like a big, sweet, uh, fruity, boozy, triple IPA, I would say. Uh, and it is, it, is, it is quite palatable. I don't think I'm gonna have too much trouble splitting this can with someone, but I don't know if I would really ha enjoy drinking a whole hall boy of this by, by myself all the way to the end as it gets a little, a little warm and flat. But I mean, I give it 90 or something like that, whatever. 87.2 bags of popcorn. Um, but it's not really about the rating. It's, it's, it's a cool beer, I'm enjoying the experience, and I think Trillium did a great, a great job with the, the stronger one. I'm um, not sure if I liked Heavy Metal more. That one was 9.4. Their other uh, strong IPA that almost was was as big as this one. For some reason, that one, uh, it just, the ex extra added booze, I'm just, just affects me. I guess I'm, I don't know, you could call me a lightweight, but I think it's my palate. Just doesn't want the, the ethanol to get in the way of the other flavors. But it's impossible to do that with this one, and they're, and they're doing it pretty well still. Um, yep. So, I guess I, I could say I recommend it, but not many people are going to get their hands on this one. But I'm sure they'll do something like it again. Goodbye.